Hello everybody, my name is Sean Dear Paul Clark and I'm here with an Alienware powered video. Thank you Alienware for sorting me out with all the equipment I have today. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing basically a Zerg tutorial where we are going to be playing on a Team Dignitas account from Bronze League. So we're playing from Bronze League today and we're going to go as high as we can and win as many games as we can in a row. Hopefully we'll be able to get in five games or so today. Um, the reason for doing this video is I want to show you guys um, how easy it is to start to advance up the leagues as long as you know exactly what we're doing. So we're going to emphasize a lot into that. First of all, before we do go into it, um, the, the, we're going to go into the menu now as you can see. Uh, one of the most important things with playing is sorting out the settings. And as you can see, I already have my predetermined settings which are from my regular account. Um, everything needs to be on low or medium. Um, the reason for this being is that you want to keep the game as black and white, as ABC, uh, as simple as can be. Because right now, uh, we're playing the game for educational purposes rather than entertainment. Um, we're playing the game to improve, not to watch and sit back with a beer. We're actually trying to get better. Uh, and the simpler it is, the easier it is for us to do so. Um, we're going to be able to uh, not have trees glowing and blowing in the wind or uh, whatever they do, and crystals shining, uh, and stuff distracting us basically, as, as simple as it can be, literally if the game could be 2D or written in words, that's how we'd like to play today, uh, really simple. Um, so as you can see, that that's my uh, graphic settings here, um, sound doesn't matter, um, voice doesn't matter, controls, that's my personal setup, I always like my mouse scroll speed a little bit higher than these two, which I don't really use. Um, pretty simple here. The other most important thing here is to have the uh, the show unit status bars on always. Um, a lot of players in, in the lower leagues especially have them on normal or maybe selected. Um, if you don't have it on always, you kind of need to get into the habit of it as fast as possible. Um, basically because um, you can see all the health of everything, as simple as that is, so you can micro stuff better or target fire onto stuff better. Uh, for example, if you see a Colossus in red health, and all the others are in green, if you don't have them always on, you're not going to know which one to target down first, of course. Um, so that's very, very important to do so. And even though you may be thinking to yourself right now, well, you know, I don't really like to have it on always because it clogs the screen up. To be honest, playing five, ten games more than with them on, sorry, uh, you actually just forget about it. You won't even notice they're on all the time. It'll just become a part of the game. Uh, so that's very important to do. Uh, also, make sure you do have the, the game timer shown as well so we can reference. Uh, and we will be doing a, a couple of references before we get going as well uh, in here. Uh, also on the uh, right-hand side, have save all replays. Very, very important to do so as well so you can uh, go back and study. Uh, and if we do lose a game today, which I'd probably kill myself if we did, because uh, I'm meant to be a little bit higher than bronze, um, we want to be focusing on why we lost and figuring out where it went wrong and every game you do lose automatically you need to load up that replay you need to go find that tipping point of where things went wrong identify it correct it and move on very very simple um, and that's the best way to learn so that's enough for the menu um, before we get going we are going to be playing uh, as Zerg uh, in the bronze league as you can see rank 99 um, the count's basically fresh in Bronze League and we'll be playing up, so I'm sorry if I actually meet anybody that's watching this video on the ladder, I'm sorry, um, but that's where it's going to go. Um, okay, things to do before we get playing. We need to have a plan. I mean, this is one of the fundamentals I talk a lot about within my coaching, is you need to have a plan what exactly we're going to be doing um, in these games. So, first of all, um, the first thing we need to do is open with a safe build in every single matchup. We'll start off with Zerg versus Zerg. In Zerg versus Zerg, uh, we want to be opening with a very, very safe Roach opening. Uh, and, and the reason why we're doing that is because uh, we are going to rely on our strengths on our macro, because that's what we're learning today, a lot about macros that carry us through the game. So as long as we don't die to anything early on, such as being rushes, such as six pulls or anything like that, we're going to win the game. Um, so we're going to focus heavily on today on defending early on and making sure we're safe, or letting our macro take control of everything to push us through. And as playing Zerg, that's what you should be relying on, even at a decent level. If you're watching this video and you're gold, platinum, above, uh, because we will be advancing through the leagues, of course, is that that's the mentality you should be having as Zerg in this game. Is As long as you can soak in all the builds, all the strategies, anything your opponent can throw at you, you react in the best way possible, 
and then continue with the game, you're going to be miles and miles and miles ahead of your opponent in every scenario possible. So that's our main focus. So back on Zerg vs Zerg, we're going to open up with some form of Roach Fast Expand. So we'll get a Roach Warren up quite early, block the ramp, uh, and then crawl our way down to the natural to make sure we secure that natural up. And once we're on two bases, we can play defensive, and then probably we're going to be going for Mutalisks. Mutalisks are very good uh, within Zerg vs Zerg recently. You can start picking off Overlords immediately. Um, you can deny expansion, slow him down, harass, keep him in his base. And while you're doing that, you can start to expand around the map or tech switch out. Because basically what Mutalisks allow you to do, once you actually get them out, your opponent goes into turtle mode, you can take a third and a relatively fast fourth base, and then once you've got these the, the extra gases and extractors taken, you can actually do whatever you want in terms of units, as long as you're a base up above, above your opponent, which is what uh, the Mutalist will pretty much give you. Um, Zerg versus Protoss. Uh, Zerg versus Protoss, we're going to be opening up with this similar build to like versus Terran here. Uh, we're going to be going for 1414. That is extract on 14, spawn import on 14. We're then going to research speed for our Zerglings right away. Very safe to do so. And the reason why we, uh, the highest level at the pro level, we see Spawn Impul first or Hatchery first in versus Protoss and versus Terran. At these lower limits, you do not need to copy the pros at that level because the advantage that using these builds without gas gives you um, is so minute that it doesn't matter at this lower level. As long as you focus on playing safe, which is what we're doing, you're going to be able to coast through the mid stages. So we're all going to go for 14-14, get that gas up. Um, we're going to then expand on around 20 supply, uh, throw the natural down on 20 supply. A little tip or a little technique we're going to use today is once we do uh, get 100 gas for speed, we're going to take out the extractor. We're then going to really focus on minerals so we can get an extra queen out for three queens. Um, well, I didn't say that right. Three queens so that we can actually creep spread by, uh, by a queen individually. Uh, and make sure that we get a spine crawl up straight away as well, playing the defensive side of things. Um, we're going to be scouting heavily. Um, for anybody with a pen and paper right now watching this, and you can always rewind, uh, I guess you could uh, note down that every single game when our opponent is on one base, we need to be sending in an overload at 5 minutes 30, 5 minutes 45. Because the reason for that timing, that is when everything finishes up. Be it Protoss, be it Terran. Um, Cloak Banshees will start to be produced at that time. Or you can see the buildings about to be switched over. Um, versus Protoss is when Warp Gate finishes. So you can see the four gateways possibly. You could see the Twilight Council for Blink or DTs or Stargate. Whatever they want to do on one base. Very easily scattered at that 5 minute 30 mark. If we can't get an Overlord in, which may be the case in a couple of the games we're going to play very, very shortly here, uh, we need to prepare for everything, especially at these lower leagues. If he's on one base past the 6 minute, 37 minute mark, you have to be ready for anything. So against Protoss, DTs, Stargate, Blink Stalkers, um, what else is there? Foregate, uh, Fast, I guess, uh, Warp Prism, Sentry Play, and, and all this kind of junk. Um, and the best way to do it is literally as soon as it comes to six minutes if he has expanded start building units zerglings if you don't have any roach or if you don't have roach one up or anything that's fine throw down this evolution chamber we're going to hit that around five minutes 36 minutes so that we can get a spore crawl out if need be against dts and of course against stargate units and then from there on we're just going to be playing reactionary we actually don't have a specific plan to what we're going to do against protoss and terran uh, because that it's going to depend on what they do depending on if they go Colossus if they want to go gateway heavy if they want to go blink We're going to react to that uh, Obviously, you should already know the best way to do it most of the time You know if he's going blink you go Hydra, if he's going uh, Colossus you go Corruptors If he goes heavy Robo you can go Mutalisks and so on and so on Against Terran, Zerg versus Terran is literally going to be exactly the same as Protoss. 14-14 uh, extractor spawn and pull for gas out of the extractor, uh, and then back in once it completes. We're also going to be getting that hatchery up on 20 supply. Um, and in terms of scouting, exactly the same. 5 minute 45 overload goes in. Uh, if we can't go in, we prepare for everything. We throw down the evolution chamber, maybe a spore crawler. Uh, an overload spread is very important for every matchup, so that's something we'll focus on a lot today. Um, all right, so that seems uh, like we're pretty much ready to go. So we can play. So if we hit find match, we were going to be playing. So um, I'm going to walk you through everything I do with this game uh, or you know whatever matchup we're paired with. 
And we're going to use the builds we talked about as well. So let's take a sip of my water. All right, let's go. All right, so, okay, random. So that's a good way to, actually, that's really good to open up this session with a random player because we have no idea what he is. And a lot of people, are you still... They, a lot of people come into the, this situation where they're like, Oh, it's random. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what to do. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're still going to do just a generic opening. 14-14. We're going to send out a drone scout as well, of course, on 12 supply to actually find out what race he is. Uh, and we'll take it from there. Antigua Shipyard. It's a relatively defensive map, um, simply because the third base is so easily taken. Uh, but the thing is, we have to keep in consideration here, this is the lowest level, so I don't really expect people to be taking uh, fast third bases or anything. It's going to be kind of based around, um, you know, one or two base play. Uh, as you can already see, as soon as the game opens, you build a drone, you send the drones to work, you hot key up and send the overlord. Um, always send your first overlord in the opposite way to where your natural is. So his base could be down here, and then the second overlord we build always to the natural. So we can scout if there's a bunker there, um, if, the, if any units are coming early on, or if he's building a pile in there for any cannons or you know, any nonsense like that. So we are going to get that 9 overlord. I prefer 9 over 10. Uh, it just it's like scientifically proven uh, that it's better for your economy if you get it on nine so and then we're gonna drone up to 10 and we're gonna scout on 12 remember so um, this overlords down there and you don't have to worry about a marine or something uh, it should be okay if you spot the barracks like here you can easily pull back in time uh, to like here or something all right so I'm sorry if I am playing fast but this is the video. <laughs> Alright, so second overlord is going to cover our natural. And we're going to grab the 12th drone. Not like send on 12th supply, but the 12th drone. So 11, 12, 13. There's the 12th drone, and we're going to send that to scout. Meanwhile, just keeping up with uh, the drone production. On 14 supply, which is this egg right now, we are going to build an extract. You can even hotkey it up and get ready to send it. And we're going to build another uh, drone behind that as well. So there's your extractor. This one is going to be the spawning pool. So if you continue like this now, where is that drone over here? And you can see my hotkeys. I have it hotkeyed as one. And my ba uh, my base is uh, four and uh, three and five. Sorry. So you can easily tab between both. So there's a spawning pool overlord here. We see that he's not in this base by the looks of it. And is he going to be up here? Uh, no. So it looks like we're cross position. So at 15 supply, we want to be building that overlord because obviously we don't get supply blocked. Uh, with this overlord, because he's not there, let's send it into a good location in between the natural and third. Um, overlord on 15, whoopsie daisy. An overlord stays put, so we know if he does bring anything. This uh, drone can mineral trick into his base. Uh, meanwhile, we're saving lava now because we're going to literally be going for a uh, queen, four zerglings, uh, and then taking off gas, as you'll see very, very shortly. So we need the lava to save up. So let's go find out what race we're actually playing against now. So there's the overlord, send it like down here or something. And we're playing against Zerg, okay, so that's fine. And there's the spawning port, relatively late. Okay, we just sent this guy back home. Queen and Lings. Oops, built. Okay, I didn't mean to build six. I meant to build four, but it's okay. Um, we now take off and we can go ahead and get ready to expand soon. We get speed and we take off the gas. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and expand very, very shortly. Um, he has actually thrown down an expansion without gas. So as soon as we see this, we'll react to the game. And what we're going to do is we're actually just going to go Banelings. So send three back into there now. Oops. Uh, send, yeah, send three back in there now. And we're going to expand very, very shortly here with this drone. And at 50 gas, we're going to throw down a bailing nest. So, this guy can go back to work. We build a hatchery in a second. And we love and check with that queen. And now we take off gas. We leave two in gas. We build up a decent uh, gas count. And at 100 minerals, we build the bailing nest. There it is. So, let's go put a bit of pressure on now. Meanwhile, there is your base. Uh, we can drone up two more times than we need an overlord. So, let's... Nothing here. Let's go in the main. Don't want to waste time. Get an overload at 100 uh, minerals. Okay, so a lot of spine crawlers. Okay, so there's your overlords. Just take rid of the spine crawlers first of all. Love and checked again. And we can build a couple more drones now. Okay, we can actually target down the queen. If he comes with drones, we just pull back because he's not mining. Meanwhile, we get ready to transfer soon. Any drones down here? Nope. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so now speed's done. We're going to start to get ready to go now. So, start making your links. Um, let's pop in again, do a little bit more pressure. Keep building links now. Remember, he doesn't have, like, gas or anything. So, he doesn't have bailings of his own. So, he's very, very heavy into spine crawls. 
pull a few drones down here. Okay, so now we're going to build another queen and we're going to focus on link production. We'll send everything down there now. We've got more than enough gas to build a lot of bailing, so we're actually going to take out of gas uh, and back to mining. Build an overlord and build some more units. These two overlords just send anywhere, it doesn't matter that much. And then we can just consistently produce links now. We've got more than enough drones to make a good link count. Don't skip your love injects, look, one energy on that queen. And now we're just going to go ahead and get these links together. We probably don't need to make bailings right away because he has spine crawlers, so we can just go in probably. Yeah, go in like this and do damage necessary. You can add on bailings now if need be, but against spine crawlers, it's better to have more links than bailings because they get targeted down so easily. So just make sure you're hitting all your lava injects. Uh, we're not getting supply capped either, so we'll build another overlord and just keep building links. Double tap, going back to your base, lava inject, and just keep building stuff. And if we need be, we can very easily just go ahead and build bailings, get these three here. It's fine, that's money he's not using. And as you can see, we're just way putting all our units, all our hatcheries into his base now. And we go in again. And I, he's lost his queens and so on and so on and so on, and now he pulls his drones in. That's the first game over. There we go forgot about these guys and that's the first game so even though we didn't know what exactly we're playing against so we didn't necessarily do that roach opening uh we we read the game well you know you go into it you spot what's going on you read it and then you react and then you continue uh, on which way you think that the game should unravel you know we identified that he didn't have gas he's not gonna have bailings he's not gonna have roaches he's not even gonna have speed uh, and he's spending a lot of money in spine crawls. So if we build Banelings, he's going to be able to target them down a lot easier, which means we're wasting a lot of value from units such as Circlings. Um, so that's pretty much it. All right, game two, let's go. See which uh, race we're playing against. Okay, Zerg again. So this time we can actually open up with a safe build because we actually know what we're playing against this time. And, and you think about uh, the last game again, even though we're playing against random, is that you want to go ahead and be like, I'm going to open up 14-14 over Roach opening early on and just take that that gamble of two times out of three, our opponent's going to be Terran and Protoss compared to that one time that he's going to be Zerg. So. And then you can just adapt throughout the game. So, um, Overlord, of course, goes the other way away from the natural. Is going to go over and scout this base first of all. Nine Overlord. Um, my hotkeys, uh, for anyone wondering, are 3 and 5, and I actually play StarCraft 1 style very uh, a lot here. I actually hotkey every single hatchery um, to an individual key, uh, and then at late game, I then will hotkey everything to 0, so I can macro really well late game. Uh, but in the early mid stages, I actually don't hotkey them all together, because I like to individually build from each hatchery, um, and it doesn't really slow me down either, because I'm quite fast enough to do so. Uh, against Zerg, you don't need to send the second overlord to your natural like you would against Terran and Protoss, because they're not going to send you know, a, a drone to build a bunker or a drone to build a pylon, so uh, we can easily just send that over to that top right base. Uh, let's send that scout. I forgot to send that scout. It's, it's a good habit to get into scouting early on every single game. Uh, in this sense, because we're going for that um, defensive roach style, we're going to get the spawn and pull down on 14 first. And then we're actually going to get the extractor when the spawner pool is near completion. Because we want enough minerals to go ahead and build a roach warren nice and early. And we're just going to play nice and safe. Uh, we can get the overload on 16 supply if we're doing this style as well. You can squeeze out one more drone and then you have enough time to build, uh, or to get two more lavas so you can build four zerglings. So let's go into his base now. Okay, no fast hatchery up here. And he isn't down here, so you can already move this overlord. And there's lings on the way. Okay, so it's a relatively early spawning pool. Uh, and gas too, so he's going to have speed lings. That's fine. So what we do now is we just get that gas up like normal. Oh, forgot that overlord. Uh, we get that overlord too. And we can build a queen, first of all, and one ling. But it's not a big problem that we missed that overlord a little bit. Uh, and then we're just going to get the roach one straight away. Nice and defensive. He could go for a bailing nest rather than speed. Um, so that's something we want to keep into consideration. Uh, well, we can just get another little zigging out now. And remember, we have more drones than he does, so. And that roach one is building. And if he goes for bailings, we're going to have to move stuff around quite well. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, Overlord here to try and scout if he's going bailings. And we can actually get another queen too. That's something you might want to do. 
Because queens are pretty good against bailings and stuff. Let's go scout with these two links, see what he's doing. Okay, that's fine. Just pull these guys back. Simple micro. Simple micro and I lose everything. Oops. Alright, so Roach Warrior's done. Let's make these uh, roaches. Meanwhile, he hasn't... I can't see any streams of lings coming. So let's go ahead and check if he has actually uh, expanded or something. But now we're pretty safe because we're going to get these roaches out very, very shortly. Well, maybe he's trying to build bailings over here, but roaches are going to be able to nullify that quite easily. Okay, no. Let's just block the ramp now and we can get ready to expand. Okay, so just a lot of links. So now we know that a lot of links are making, we don't necessarily have to expand straight away. What you can do is build a spine crawler. And a lot of people do have difficulties in this matchup because of stuff like this. Uh, like, they try to play safe and macro, but they just die to all ins and stuff. But this is pretty walled off, pretty tight. So make sure you do wall off. Make sure as well that you have these units on hold position. And make sure the wall off actually is walled off. And then you can back it up. And you can just build a few drones here and there as well. And keep that creep spread going down. Because if creep spread's going to enable you to crawl down shortly. He still hasn't expanded. So we'll just sit there tight. And do maximum amounts of damage. Look at that. So good. And he still hasn't expanded as we can see. And with this spine crawler, what we can do is actually throw it down on the lower ground. I don't know why he's got drones there. And now he doesn't actually have that much, so let's just go down and we can expand now as well. Okay. Alright, that was weird, but that's how to play safe, man. Play safe. You know, in the low leagues as well, is something you need to keep in consideration, is that a lot of people's play doesn't make much sense. Uh, so it's even hard to read them properly. Like, I didn't really read that well at all. I, you know, I expected speedlings, then maybe bailings, he got an extractor, but we didn't actually see anything come out from him. Just some slowlings and drones to actually try and help out. So, um, just play the game safe and you'll always uh, be able to win. Alright, let's just quickly check what... Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Never mind. Oh, it's Protoss, finally. Not Zook. All right. So, we're going to be able to look at this 14-14 build now. On this map, you can actually throw the Overlord all the way in between his main and natural right away, because um, luckily for us, Zealots can't fire up. Therefore, um, obviously this Overlord is going to be able to get in great position. And the Stalker will not come out in time. Uh, a little trick for you to do as well, if you want to try, is you can actually try to line the drones up as well, like this. If you get them mining on the on the same mineral patch, the closest ones actually get more money because they don't have to travel as far. Meanwhile, this overlord in there. The second overlord is always uh, to the natural to just protect and well, not really protect, but oversee anything if anything goes on. And we're going to be sending that scout at twelve again as usual. We require more minerals. If you want in like dead time like this, you can even try and pair up another drone and be like ba ba, get them working together. Okay. Alright, send that overlord to the natural. The overlord's gonna hang around the natural until we know that he hasn't gone for a forge or something with our 12th drone scout, which is this one. Uh, and then, when we know he's got like a gateway, we know that pressure can't come in, t in form of like a pylon cannon rush or whatever. So we can actually very easily um, just move the, move the overlord away safely into like down the left hand lane to the, towards the back of his base. So there's that 14th drone, there's the extractor, and then this one will be the spawning pool, nice and safe. Don't need to play gimmicky or fancy play or anything, just play nice and straight up and safe. So, next one is the spawning pool, which can go just here at the back. And let's scout out what he's doing. You know, this low league proxy stuff can happen, or random stuff can happen, so it's always good to find out. So, there's the gateway, let's move this overboard. We go in, we see a lot of chrono boost, but we don't see any gas taken, so... It's a little bit weird. But like we said, it's the lower level. But, like, you can anticipate stuff that he's doing, but, you know, never make clear out assumptions and be like, alright, he's definitely doing this. Because it doesn't make sense. Like, even at, like, mid-levels of StarCraft 2, it doesn't make sense. So, we got the Overlord down. We're just waiting now for Lava to spawn so we can build Lings. 
I did get the overload on 16 this time, a little bit of a mistake rather than the 15, but that's fine. So, queen, double links, there's that little hold up because we uh, didn't sort that out properly. Take off gas, and we get speed. And we're, we're already at um, 20 supplies, so we can expand with this drone, basically. Um, the, this overload already sent, that's a good habit to get into, is that you just send overloads like straight away. As soon as they pop, send it. Because otherwise you just get clumped up overloads all the time. Alright, so let's go ahead and expand now with this. Nice and safe expansion. With four Zerglings, Zelnaga Tower, Zelnaga Tower, Mineral Line, and then there's Ramp. And then we can just drone up and one more time and get another Queen. First Queen Love Inject, move the creep, get ready to creep spread. And just get rid of this probe. Let's go in, and then you can overload up and just continue joining. Remember that we are going to be going for, or putting back into gas after. And we can actually go in, look. He hasn't done anything, so we can just go around and check what's up. No, nothing that makes sense right now. He's not chrono boosting. He's, uh, he's okay in probes, but not that high. He's chrono boosting into something right now, which is probably the Cybernetics Core. And there's that creep spread, move down, overload. Another one can go here. Love inject. And it's just kind of wishing out a stalk or something. So just playing safe. Keep building stuff though, never slip up on uh, production. Build another overlord, keep stuff out. Speed is done, back into gas with three. And there's that stalker. So we also notice the second gas is taken, but look at these two overlords we have in position to go in at 545 to find out what's going on. So let's keep making uh, drones. Remember the key thing uh, with drone and unit production mechanic is build drones until you no need units unless it passes a certain mark which is like this, the six minute six minute thirty mark or so on in this league always build a spine crawl and always add on that third queen really safe to do so uh, we should add on another overload very very shortly here so there is another overload on the natural and just keep joining up at this time now let's go in and check you can even move in with two uh, it doesn't matter and we can actually start to think about evolution chamber in case he's doing some funky stuff. And there's a gateway, so let's start to build a few units now, just as a safety net. Pull back with this overlord, and you can probably save it. Build some wings, come in with this, and there's another... Oh, robotics facility. Okay, so that like doesn't make too much sense either. Um, but that's okay. Spread your overlords out, keep building drones again. And so, one, two, three gateways, and robotics facility. So, like an immortal gateway push, which doesn't work that well. Um, we can get uh, the, the missile attack, uh, melee attack, sorry. Um, build some overlords because we lost some. Um, the thing is, when you see robotics facility, it's not Stargate now, it's not DTs, you don't need spore crawlers, right? So, uh, we can even start to add on the gases now, maybe throw down a roach worm. And always be one base above your opponent. He hasn't got a second base, so you don't need to take a third base. Just focus on your creep spread. Uh, and other stuff like that. Keep building drones though to saturate both these bases. And right now you need to be on your toes. Because he's on one base. He could come at you any second now. So that's something to just uh, get ready for. We can go to the lair as well. We got enough drones to do so. We can get the gas. Get the fourth gas as well. And very, very shortly we're actually going to start roach production. Roach link. Uh, we can waypoint both down to the naturals. Poke up, see what he is doing. A couple of overlords. Okay. That's an expansion. Though we know that he's not going to come attack us right now. So we, j we can just play it safe. Uh, I mean, keep joining up because he's not coming to attack us. And we've got Ling's Edda Scout if he does too. And as soon as we hit 50 drones, which is 2 base saturation, we're going to go ahead and just attack with Roach Ling because he hasn't expanded. So we can poke up. Yeah, there's some shenanigans on this base. We can get in. <laughs> nice force fields, I guess. Uh, and we just go in and, and don't see too much, right? So we can very easily mop this up with just Roach Ling. So we're at a decent amount of... Uh, Drones, so let's go ahead and just, uh, whoop, Big Brother's watching. Uh, just go ahead and creep spread still. Grab the creep streamers, see everywhere. Grab the queen, see, see, see. And then start your roach and ling production. He has to expand shortly, is what this link's here for. So, get speed, fuel overlords. You can expand now as well as we're at fully saturated bases. And just build units. So, even if, like, Immortals and so on, they, they actually counter Roachling. Immortal, Gateway Immortal couch, counters Roachling really well. But when you have more than enough, it doesn't matter. You just have too much stuff, which is what we're focused on. Macro, safe macro. Uh, the way I'm macroing is just double tapping three, double tapping four, double tapping three, double tapping four, and SR, SR. Like I said in the, the previous game, is that 
at these stages you can easily just mac mac macro sorry on these uh, two hatcheries really well just by individually clicking around. Well, let's kill these rocks in between the third base before we actually go attack. So let's start overall. And then we can go soon because now we know he's expanding. So right now he doesn't have that much money because he just spent 400 into an expansion. So let's just build a bunch of units, get another upgrade, and we can go attack this base now and then win the game. Continue to creep spread everywhere. Look at the minimap. looks really nice and fluent. Uh, it's really good. So all right, let's get all this stuff now and let's go. Okay, so when you attack, make sure we're not missing lava injects. Let's check our natural lava inject queen. What energy is it at? It's at 12, so I missed a, a few seconds here and there. This one's a little bit lower. That was on like 5 or something. But let's go now. You can even drone up now as well while we do this. Even though we've got a decent amount of units, we just have too much where we can just continue to build more. Every fight, go back to your base and macro. Every fight, you don't even have to micro as a to a certain extent you just make sure you're just building a bunch of stuff so this is this is fine we're wearing him down and now once his outline goes in you can even go in and target down the sentries and that's fine now you can drone up a little bit more because we put him under a lot of pressure and danger so we actually can't afford to uh attack right now because he doesn't have any units right he just lost a lot so let's go ahead and just um drone up to these bases little counter-attack into his main, drone up now, and we get this uh, fifth base fully functional. And we see a Colossus uh, a Robotics Facility Bay down, as you can see down, so we can very easily now just go ahead and start Corruptors and so on. Take the gases immediately on this base. Uh, our money is nice and high, so we can even throw down a Macro Hatch, and we'll get another Queen ready to Lava Inject from there, and that's pretty much it. So. As this goes down, we can take a fourth base very, very, uh, very, very shortly. Keep creep spreading. Very important to focus on that as well. And just keep adding on Roachling. That's a very simple com uh, combination of units. And at these lower leagues, you can just build stuff. Like it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a perfect uh, composition. Like Hydras would have been great for us right now, but we're just focusing on macro, as you can see. So let's go ahead and we can poke again shortly. Just wait for this next uh, wave of units to come out. Spend our money, and then we can even go get a fourth base now as well. We can throw a hydrogen down, we can get this uh, hatchery ready to mine. I mean, not mine, but build units from. And always build excess overlords. Like, you don't just build like one or two at this point, build like four or, you know, extras. Because then you can just easily max out. Get more upgrades, more overlords. Keep love injecting. 13 energy, that main one. It's okay, and as you can see, we're just crossing through. So this attack now, which is inevitably coming, we just have more stuff, right? So let's just go, and we can get it right in there with roaches, right in there. To nullify the fact he has force fields. Just get right in there. Continue the macro in the background. Don't miss lava and check. So we go back in. in the game. Waypoint everything down there now. Make sure you're love injecting the main. Not we require okay. more minerals. And uh, that's pretty much it. I think. So it doesn't even matter if he has a Colossus. Like roaches like this, you can just push through. There we go. And just keep building stuff all the time. Ooh, overlords. Okay. GG. Okay. So I'm gonna guess that guy's like in Silver League. So already we've gone from bronze, silver, and starting to rise up just by simply walking through everything here with you guys. I hope. So let's just quickly look at uh, this match history. See what this guy was. Okay, still bronze. Let's play again. So right now it's. 4.45, we started at 10 past, I've been playing for about half an hour now, so not that much, um, and we've played three games, three wins. Let's see what happens in this next game. And I will be doing it in kind of future videos too, I will be doing a Terran and Protoss one as well, where I'll walk through the thought process of how to play uh, that race as well. But starting with Zerg today. Okay, so another random. So we can just scout again at 12. Supply, Shakir Plateau again. So we already know where our overlords are going. So build a drone, spread your drone, uh, build a drone and spread, and then hotkey up and send your overlords. 
once again. And this is the point where it's dead space, right? We don't need to be doing anything apart from a single drone. So you can actually start to bring these guys together on the same mineral field. Like that. You can do another one in a second. So build a drone at 50. Put this guy here and this guy here. And you can force them to mate, as you can see. And you can do another one over this, this mineral field. So let's grab this drone and put him here. Let's see. And now they're like all on the closest patches, basically. Alright, so let's get back into this. Remember to 12 scout as well. Very important to do so. Probably managed to say good luck, have fun. I haven't been doing that at all so far. Alright, next overall is straight up here immediately. Depending on if our opponent is here or up here, we can move that second overlord into a safer location as well. So remember to 12 drone scout. Always drone scout to the opposite base that the overlord, the first overlord is not going to. So he's going here, drone scout goes here. Let me just continue. 14 supply. We still, even though this is a kind of defensive macro map, we still use the safe build. So we can get speed out. And then we will be going for this 14 spawn pool here as well. Uh, remember to keep droning up, very important. Look at the minimap. You can see that the our drone is like the Zelnaga Tower here. And one more drone and then we go into Overworld. And now we start to check out where our opponent is um, in terms of bases. So what's this? An Overworld. Okay, so we're playing against Zerg. And he's up here. So it's So the gas extractor is about the same time as mine. You can check it just by the amount of gas that's in there. Alright, that's fine. So pull this overload now here and start to make a line. In Zerg versus Zerg, make a line of overloads between base to base, from natural to natural, like all the way across here. Because like you're not gonna have queens wandering around in the middle of the map to actually deny that. So you can start to make a line. We're gonna get gas and we're gonna take off just like normal. And then we're going to expand. And there's one, there's two, and there's this one too. And then we can just drone it one more time. We're expanding on uh, 200 minerals. Uh, it should have been 20 supply, but because we lost that scouting drone, it's 19. But same thing. We will be playing a roach style once again, though. So after we expand, we're then going to go and try and get that roach one down and we'll play that style. So, hatchery down. We require more minerals. Another drone. We oh, actually, save minerals. save your money for uh, another queen. Second queen straight away is always important here, too. Just like the other matchups. Especially when using this build, very simple. So, queen and love inject. Run past these zerglings. Don't turn around. Um, like, he has to chase you now. So, you can actually get away with uh, getting this up faster. If he turns around, just build another set. And drone up again. Overload on 100 minerals, and then we get the uh, roach warren down. Okay, so he hasn't expanded. Note that. He should be playing aggressive. So let's go find out what aggressive, aggressive play he's going to use on us. Okay, spine crawl. Okay, so we just run around. He's still mining gas, but he's very, very defensive. That's fine. Okay, we pull down his queen, lava inject. And there's these two links to help out. And let's throw the roach horn down and then go back into gas. One, two. And you can see that we're starting. Okay, six links now. So let's just build a couple more links. We have two and a queen. So should be okay. Yeah, should be okay. Crete spread, build another queen. You can even transfer a couple of drones down. Not too many because we're in gas now, a lot earlier than normal. We require more minerals. We require more minerals. Uh, these links can help. Build a spine crawler like usual. And then just take out our gas for a second. Because we're already a decent count, we can actually make four roaches, which is more than enough. So you don't need gas right now to take out. We've got an overload building as well. So very, very shortly we're gonna build uh, some roaches. And let's just poke in to see if he has expanded. Okay, a lot of stuff coming. So now you build uh, roaches and stuff. You can block the ramp as well. Love and jet one more time. We require more minerals. And these are slow, so that's good for us. Let's pull this queen down and swap. Swap queens, because one's low health, one's not. So obviously it's gonna help out more. And get these roaches coming. And we can block the ramp. 
You can even actually, because this uh, hatchery is so late, you could even get a second spine crawl down. So make sure you hold this position. See, GG. Just play defensive, play safe. Alright. Let's go again. Let's just check how high that guy was. So hopefully we should start climbing up relatively fast. Okay, Silver League. So we breached into Silver League now as well. So we can keep going for part one. Let's have a look at the time spent so far. It's been about 40 minutes. Don't want to go over an hour for part one. So we'll go for an hour and then we can do part two very, very shortly here as well. Okay, so Protoss player. Unfortunately, we haven't had a Terran player yet. But it's okay. So, it's everything the same as usual. That's the thing with playing the lower leagues. Consistency. Just do everything the same over and over and over and over. If you make a mistake and you lose a game, find out what the mistake is. And don't do it again. And just continue like normal. It's the way to become a good player fast. <laughs> I don't want to talk, so... It's going to focus on talking to you guys, not this... Alright, so 9 overlord again. And remember, it's Protoss. So, on this map, at the higher levels, like the pro level, it's, it's pretty much a f uh, Forge Fast Expand map. Um, I don't think we're going to see that in the lower leagues, and if they do, they're going to do it wrong, probably, because they don't know the placements of pylons uh, and so on. So, we're just going to anticipate that it could happen anyway and keep the overlord on the natural rather than sending it out straight away. I uh, remember the 12 drone scout once again. There is the 12th drone. And let's go across into the space. I hope I'm not boring too much. This is a very educational focused video. And there's that drone scout, so let's go find out where he is and what he's doing. Um, other builds that do happen in lower leagues is cannon rushes, uh, two zealot plays as well. So the faster we find out what it is, the faster we can start to adapt. So keep this over here to scout. Meanwhile, let's drone up one more time again. And now 15 supply, we can go ahead and uh, throw down the spawner pool. 14th drone, 15th supply, and then we can build one more drone and then overload, so is our opponent here? Yes, so there's the gas, there's the uh, gateway, that's absolutely fine, let's go into gas ourselves. And at 15th supply, overload straight away, and we just waypoint our big circle around, and then just keep this drone alive for a while. Meanwhile, we're saving while we're ready for the uh, links and so on. With this uh, overload, you can move it like right to the back of his base or something now, and this one as well to the back of his natural. Get them in good position or ready to scout later on. Uh, this one could just go up here to his third base. So, spawn pull's about to finish. We'll just check this, see if he's got the gas. No. Spawn pull finishes. We queen, double tap the zerglings, and then a drone. So, ready? Queen, double tap zerglings, drone, pull off gas at 92. There we go. I know we get speed. Okay, so we're at 20 supply, so we can go ahead and expand. Still no second gas. Chrono boost into the Nexus doesn't make too much sense. Because you could have done that a lot earlier on. No zealot. So let's go ahead and expand now at 200. Same theory like before. Zalnog Tower. Zalnog Tower. That uh, mineral line. And then we just use one Zergling to scout around. Because we want to be able to find out if he has hit a probe somewhere. And it's the second gateway. Let's leave this now because the stalker should be on its way. So another queen on the edge of creep. Okay, so the probe was just on there. That's fine. So just check around anyway. Just uh, attack move, uh, shift, and then you can click around. Okay, so let's hide this guy there. It's not really hidden because you can see it with the probe, but overlord. And we're pretty safe against any hidden pounds or anything because we've uh, scouted quite well. So let's pull this guy in here. Overlord here to check if he expands. Meanwhile, still droning because it's not 5 minute 45 yet. Warp gate is not done. So he cannot attack us right now. I'm getting overlords into position. Love inject. Speed is about to finish, so let's go back into gas with 3. And keep building drones. Now speed is done, let's just poke up a little bit. We need an overlord soon. We can actually run in. Oh, we're running. Okay, let's find out what's going on in here. Keep building drones in the background. Okay, just two gateways. Is that it? 
That's weird. Not enough energy. Transfer down, creep spread again. And that's it. Just two gateways. Okay. Always go ahead and build a spine crawl every single game. Okay, he's gonna build it. Check for the expansion. No, so something's a little bit fishy, so go ahead and just. Oh, crap. <laughs> go ahead and throw down that uh, evolution chamber to be sure. We can go ahead and scout again as well. He didn't take the second gas still, so I'm a little bit confused. But when we're confused, we just play extra safe. But he's not attacking yet, so we don't need to build anything. Oh, there he is. So there's the expansion. It looks like two gate expansion. There's our hidden little Zergling. We can go on and double check again. So, robotics facilities. No second gas, though, so. So, let's just go ahead and get plus one miss, uh, melee attack. And we can go layer very, very shortly. Like now. Uh, start to take second and third gas. And since he's expanding right now, you can actually go ahead and expand yourself, right? One base above your opponent. We can keep that there, check the gas, and let's go expand. We want to be building a Roach one in this matchup. It's just pretty safe to do so, right? We're playing safe. Let's play safe. So let's go ahead and expand very, very shortly here as well. Use that creep uh, queen to dedicate it to creep spread. Let's build this hatchery now. Okay. Lava injects. Oh, miss a whole lava inject up here. Not too lazy. Keep building drones though, because he's not attacking us yet. He's sitting on one base. Oh, two bases now, sorry. Gas has finally been taken here, not mining from yet. Check his gases again. Still nothing, so he actually can't tech to anything, so you don't have to worry that much. He could attack with, like, a low, kind of, I mean, a heavy zealot count, but low sentry stalker count, but, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and just get these hotkeyed up now and start spreading that creep. Once again, we're just going to focus on a very generic, roach-heavy kind of composition, so... We're saturating on the main, saturating on the natural, but we can start building up ready for the third, so we'll just keep building drones, because he's not attacking us. There is the observer on our main base, you can see the little crystal glow. Let's overseer up, see if he has gone Colossus. If he has, then we can go ahead and just immediately throw down the Spire. Because that may be an option we may branch off to here, because he's got the bugs facility. We can start the uh, Roach production now as well, as we're starting to get good saturation up. Transfer to the f earth, to the third, and overseer in. So let's check around. Spawn changeling. I don't think he has enough gas to even go Colossus, so. No, it doesn't look like it. He's taking all four gases now, so. Maybe he's gone for it now after this. So, that's fine. Mortal, that's fine. Just back up. You get a second evolution chamber down. Just focus on upgrades. We're so far ahead. And we're ahead because we haven't done anything wrong, if that makes sense to you. It's so, okay, so maybe he might push out right now, so we just focus on units. And he's gone back, so we saw the tail end of the stalker return home, so. But if he's gonna attack to Colossus, which seems like the most viable option for him from here, is that we just wanna go ahead and attack very, very shortly, um, because that's before Colossus hits, which is gonna be roughly, well, quite soon. So just keep drawing up, get this base saturated, throw down the spire anyway in anticipation for Colossus coming if this little pressure attack doesn't work. Um, and just focus on upgrades now because we've got six gases through the third base now so we can really push our gas into upgrades. Make sure we are building units. We can overseer up again, active scouting, very important. Uh, active scouting as well so make sure he hasn't taken a third base. You can actually use overlords as well to spread creep. Very good upgrade is the overlord speed as well. To help us spread overlords, but as you can see, we have a lot here already. So let's just get rid of these already. Oh, he's coming, so let's start to build units. Uh, it doesn't have too much. Put this spine crawl in the middle here. It doesn't have upgrades either, so just keep making overlords, as, as you can hear. And we get ready to fight very, very soon. Okay, so, oh, let's go. Remember to don't miss lava injects. Never miss lava injects. Keep building units. 
keep building units. That's the way to beat this. So pull back a little bit while we wait for the reinforcements to come. And just keep building stuff. Target down the Immortal if it's just there by itself at the front. But don't take too many hits. Remember to keep Lava Injecting. He hasn't taken the third base, so as long as we defend against this pressure, we'll miss that. It's fine. So we can even start to react a little bit to the composition, throw a Hydrogen down, get plus one attack if he has gone. Let's use this Overseer to check if he has gone Colossus. He did kill a few Overlords in the middle. Let's check what's going on. Okay, Forge, Blink. Because the can't go Zealot Charge, I don't think. It doesn't make too much sense. It's probably Blink. But still no Colossus uh, Robotics base, sorry, Colossus Den, whatever down. Chicky hasn't expanded here. Continue with upgrades. No. So still two bases, it's fine. And as you can see now, we built the overall as necessary. We can go ahead and just expand one more time. And we have more than enough to deal with this, so. Get all our roaches. Let's use that speed to our advantage. I think it looks like he wants to expand soon, maybe. But it's okay. Let's grab these units now. Immediately get the uh, Hydralis range. Waypoint everything over here. And let's just build some Hydras now. Because he hasn't gone for a Colossus Bay. Or a Robotics Bay. Tie it down the Immortal. One look. You can see how you do that. Like attack, move, walk. Attack, walk. Attack, walk. And you just get like maximum damage output from Roaches. Meanwhile, just keep building up stuff. Doesn't have any uh, sentry assist, is pretty much it. Attack walk, attack walk. And get really close to get every roach attacking. And then just come in and keep building. And GG. Alright. Let's play again. Last game now. Um, before we end this part one. And we can just check that guy's ranking too. Because we're starting to now climb up these ranks really fast. So. Let's check this. Oops. Match history. Last game. Okay, so highish silver still. Okay, a random. This map is. I don't like this map too much. Just because there's close positions by ground makes it kind of rough to play Zerg sometimes. But we're going to scout close by air first of all. Make sure our opponent isn't there. If it is close by ground, we want to be playing a little bit more defensive because pushes can happen faster. Tank pushes, Protoss pushes, like four or five gateway pushes can help hurt faster too. So. Scout air first. Go up here, scout up here. It says hi. Good luck, have fun. We require more minerals. Let's see if we're still playing against silver. Oh no, we've gone up a level. Alright. So, remember 9 overlords. <laughs> it's silver. Alright. There's our 9 overlords. Drone. Remember 12th drone scout too, so everything consistent. And remember to try and read the game well, like we've been trying to do together so far. So just see what he's doing all the time. Alright, so next overlord's gonna sit here because we don't know what race he is yet. And we're gonna use that 12th drone here to go scout. Okay, so is he up here? If he's not, we need to remove this overlord immediately to a better position. Because it's no point leaving an overlord here, right? So let's put up here and then waypoint it all the way down to the back of this natural in case our opponent has spawned in the top left. All right, 14 extractor coming down with this drone. Where is it? There it is. And then we're going to go sporting 14 spawning pool as well. Okay. So 14 spawning pool, 14th drone, 15th supply. Uh, is he close by ground? No. So let's go up there. So remember, he still could be cheesing us or something like that. So, uh, but we're we're pretty safe. We've got a nice opening. We've got spawn pool relatively fast as well. So there goes the overlord. Well, let's find out what's going on. Click the mineral field in case there is a block of some sort of units or whatever. Just go straight in and barracks. Okay, so Terran, first Terran opponent of today. 
Okay, so what's this? No, it's a little bit weird not to have the uh, orbital command, sorry. It's a bit weird. It means there could be a hidden barracks somewhere, maybe. We require more because it should have gone down a bit earlier, so. Right, so it's just gonna be a factor, I think, here, so just harass that. Take all the way off gas. Oh. Reactor. Okay, tech lab, so. Interesting. So let's go expand now. Move these links, the log tower, and let's put one up here, one here, and one here. And let's try and get this guy home. Ah, oh, a bit of, a couple of drones. Oops. Yeah. So maybe Reaper could come out. That's fine. We got Queen, a Queen out, and a second one building too. So Hatchery should have gone down, but I made the mistake to build two drones. It's okay. All right, let's go in and find out what's up. Okay, he's walled off. Okay. Oh, Marine. That's weird. He's not researching anything either from the uh, tech lab, as you can see. So let's just continue to play it normal. Still build drones, right? Because nothing can come. It's like impossible for something to come right now. So we don't need to build units right now. That's a, a, a mistake I see from a lot of players uh, in the lower leagues. You just build a bunch of leagues now. It's like, what? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, let's hope one of these is an overlord yet. Alright, spread that overlord immediately. Let's poke up the ramp again. It's important to just poke up, you know, is he researching anything? Does he have a marauder there? Uh, or something, so let's poke up. Okay, he's researching and a second barracks. Um, because we're cross positions, it's a little bit harder to get an overlord in position. So let's just throw down evolution chamber anyway, and we're probably going to be looking at some form of one base aggression from uh, bio forces, so... Get ready to transfer down now. Transfer a little bit more heavily because uh, we messed up the hatchery timing. Go back into gas now as well. Okay, still researching something. This oval is going to be the chosen one to go in. So let's build a spine crawler anyway, as we always do. Third oval as well, making uh, third queen. Sorry. And the evolution chamber can help us uh, in the fact that we're going to go for plus one mel missile attack straight away. So, oh melee attack. Sorry, sorry. Okay, keep joining though, because he's not coming yet. Though we have lost vision of just in front of his ramp, so we want to have that to have maximum reaction time. Very important to keep the creep spreading though, so let's keep this guy there so we can see if he comes. And we have enough time. I would probably build a second spine crawler because he still hasn't expanded. It's how you read the game and start to play against it. Let's get plus one melee attack. Uh, creep spread as well. And let's send this guy in. Cut across now. We don't need to go layer, as you notice. We don't need to go layer because we don't know what we're playing against. Four Marines. Is this a Tet Lab, maybe? So it looks like. I think Tet Lab. Probably Tet Lab. So what we're playing against now looks like a one base Marine tank push. Uh, the best way to deal with it is simply by going a lot of links. Um, so that's fine. Just keep creep spreading, though, most important. Because wherever the creep is, is where his first tank will deploy. So. The further the creep is out, the better. We can go lay now as well, because he's not coming right now. But he should be coming soon. Because it's cross positions, it's a little bit more difficult to actually get scanning, as we mentioned. So we don't know if he has expanded, so we're going to have to use links. Or a single link. But keep creep spreading, very important. Okay, let's stop building some links now. Take the third and fourth gas, because we are going to go meters at the same time. But we need to be still cautious. And, you know, I'm very cautious to what's actually going on right now. So let's build some more comfort links. <laughs> Okay, whoa, they're not meant to be there. Okay, let's run around. Uh, okay, so we have to send more. Whoa, Hellions? Okay, didn't expect that. Okay, we've got links though, so... Get us around, because he's on creep. Let's get into the guests now as well. Okay, so I didn't expect Italians to come. What's this? A few Marines, so go clear the Marines up. And we can actually go ahead and throw down the the uh, spy now as well. And we can expand to a fifth base and macro hash if we're playing spy to play. Oh, there's the Marines. And it has a sting too, so that's kind of expected. Drone cat's a little bit low in the main. See if he has expanded. I guess he has. Should have. Okay, what? 
Oh, okay, defensive. Okay, so I think it's still a marine tank play or whatever, but just leave the wings spread around now so you can actually see if anything comes. For work on that creep spread, Sean. And then very, very shortly here we can always try to keep, right now, because we're at a decent uh, amount of drones, but try to keep your gas and minerals balanced. And the best way to do that is just by building some more overlords. And we got another queen, so we can use this hatchery now. Our forces are under attack. Okay, so just keep map vision. Always keep on the scanning. So build a couple more overlords now. Maybe a couple more drones here and there to keep the gas and minerals balanced. And now we're about to go ahead and use all our lava for meters. Okay, it tanks. Okay. I don't know how much is there, so let's just poke. Okay, we can definitely do that. We require more Vespine gas. Work on upgrades as we well. Don't that much love and as you can see right now, we don't have enough gas, so use all your lava and minerals in drones. So we can actually get this base up and running and immediately take the gases there. So as the meters come out, let's show you how to meter control well. So the way to muter control well is that you need to be sending them to locations and then like doing macro stuff. So we already sent these guys over to the back of his main base and then we're just going around upgrading, wealth injecting, building drones, building uh, overlords and building stuff. So let's go in now and see what's up. We can pick off tanks, that's great. There's his expansion really, really late, so. So that's fine. Take the gases now. And what we're going to do is just harass. Uh, now he's taking that base. We've already got a third up. We've got a lot of uh, drones now. Because this base is full. So you can even take a fourth. Like, there's no reason not to. Um, creep spread's not that impressive. So let's work on it a little bit more. And keep building up that high meter account. Get another upgrade. If we can get the first upgrade. No. <laughs> Might get that upgrade now. We just keep on there. Uh, so, build lings and drones with minerals, and all your gas is into muters right now. Probably get a bailing nest too. I'm actually playing a, a little bit more um, muter heavy uh, without little bailings. It's kind of, I shouldn't have really done that. I should have probably gone for bailing nest a little bit early because it's just safer and it's a little bit unsafe to play heavy muter count. So, but in this sense, we're still doing fine. Let's get that speed upgrade again for. Uh, the overlords and let's spread the spread these overlords out everywhere and get consistent well complete map vision everywhere it's like amazing to have let's get that hatchery up and just keep building overlords as well great way to spend that and just a lot of links you can get a second uh, or even just take the uh, infestation out. and you just has so little stuff we just have so much Pop out again. Lowering the tank count just makes like bailings imber basically. And our money's nice and low, so let's hockey up this hatchery now. And you can see that just by harassing, I'm gonna pick off some SCVs here and here. Another SCV here. And he's stimming a lot, it doesn't have any medivacs, so it makes this even more powerful. Let's build a few drones just to go up onto that fourth base. And we can go to Hive now as well. Meter count. At this stage of the game, like... I don't know how he got there. <laughs> At this stage of the game, lings are basically free. So as long as you don't lose them to a like a horrible, horrible attack, it's actually okay to like throw them around and stuff to lower his army. So in that sense, we're actually just going to throw lings in. Because then we can replace with, uh, or get rid of supply, increase the link count very easily again. Because look at our resources, like, we can just get rid of links so easily. So let's go in, and at the same time go in here. And we can actually just get rid of all that. Go into the main base, and we are actually just killing right out here. Meanwhile, just getting rid of our gas again, replenishing everything. GG. Okay. Mineral 
Okay, so um, let's just check to see if that was gold, and then we can uh, close up this part one. I mean, there will be two parts overall. Um, so let's just check this really fast. If he was gold. Indeed he was, and he's low gold, but you can see us advancing through now. So uh, I hope you enjoyed part one. It was educational for you. And uh, please watch part two.